A love letter to horror stars of a dead generation, Frightmare. <laughs> Frightmare was released in 1981 or 82 or 83. I'm not really sure. It's a little inconsistent online. But it's Lars Freddy Main, who's Count Dracula and Frankenstein's aunt, or the god in Night Train to Terror, or the leader in Conan. And here he's the movie star Conrad in Frightmare. Conrad is a film star of a dead era, quite possibly the last of his age. He has some trouble shooting a commercial, which leads the director tumbling to his death. And then Conrad goes to horror society school to speak for the students, but he ends up collapsing. Having to come to terms with his death, Conrad arranges his last big performance, his funeral. He smothers his caretaker slash director Wolfgang, who's in Hogan's Heroes, all for another kill, just to hold the audience off, even though you can still kind of see him breathing here. And Conrad crawls into his coffin, a million dollar funeral is held, and a message from beyond the grave is played, the first of many. His body is left in a mausoleum, so the students of the school break in at night and steal his corpse, casket or all, as you do when your favorite horror star passes away. They bring it back to the school they apparently stay at, and they kick it with Conrad. They have dinner, dance, play games, and eventually it's time to call it a night, so they tuck him into his casket, but he told them he isn't even tired yet, and he blows his way out. Now, I should point out who the students are at this point. The main guy, Sade, is the producer of 12 Monkeys and director of Ghoulies, Bobo or Scott Thompson, who was in everything from Ghoulies, Police Academy, Night Living Dead 3D, Parasite, Smokey the Bandit, Twister, Robocop, and a bunch of other films. We've got Stu, who's Herbert West, Jeffrey Combs, of course, an icon of the genre, known for many roles. Although I didn't know he voiced Ratchet from Transformers before this, though. The rest are kind of just kids that sort of don't matter. They don't really have distinguishing careers, but Conrad starts picking them off right away. One kid gets his tongue ripped out, one poor girl gets lit on fire by his mind somehow. <laughs> One girl is bashed to death by the gasket, Combs gets decapitated, Bobo is gassed in the mausoleum, and that leaves us Satan and his girlfriend Meg left. The professor stops by and saw Conrad sink your flower with the ground and putting two and two together with his body disappearing being big news, he got the police involved. Meg stays behind after she spears Conrad with Jesus, Saint takes his body back to where it belongs, but Conrad of course wakes up and chases him. The two land in the crematorium where he overtakes Satan, cremates the dude, and a standout kill. We end off with Meg still alive and Conrad's greedy wife stealing from his body, so I guess we just gotta get a final kill in and a little message from hell. Framer is a fun flick, nothing too standoutish from this one, but it has a rising star or two in here, and Freddy Mundane is a perfect for this role. This performance is believable as a once massive star, feels betrayed as he's fallen out of love in Hollywood, now in death, returning with a vengeance for one last grand show. It's a cool concept and a movie that could probably use a remake today. You tell the film was kind of shot for fun, and some continuity goofs made it through. Wolfgang breathing after he dies, Satan takes off the same shoe twice, so you can see wires when the casket's floating, a hose from the fog machine is visible, little goofs like that, but nothing that'll really take you out of the movie per se. Christopher Lee was almost in the role as Conrad, probably the only man who could have made a better performance, although I do like what we got, what could have been may have made this much more of an iconical classic. There is a scene, although, where they showed old Conrad film, that is actually an early performance by Lee, funny enough. The film originally was going to be shot in black and white, but only color on the film would be red, kind of as the blood, but it's a cool idea, I don't think it would have translated here, especially with the limited blood used in the movie. Overall, it's another fun flick. This one will later be distributed by Trauma and Vinegar Syndrome. Definitely a film I wouldn't mind owning a physical copy of, personally. Limited boobage, a dead and gone era of horror, stolen corpses, creepy dinner, a double R, decapitation, lots of fog, lots of old man, a floating casket, reanimator, horror memorabilia, and a wicked burning stunt. A star in life is a star in death. Went into darkness, then into flame. Good night, sweet prince of ham. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you're on already, drop a little subscription down below. Make sure you stay tuned because every day in the month of October, I'm dropping a different horror movie review. Uh, I believe they come at 7 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. And uh, so keep an eye out for that. And then every week, every other week uh, throughout October, there's a bonus comic video still coming up. I still want to make sure there's still some combo content on the channel. And then throughout the rest of the year, there's combo content every single week, one to two times a week. Plus, I do the YouTube shorts where I post stuff on there every day. I got the Instagram. I got the Facebook. I got the, in the Facebook group, Fans Unleashed, where you get a behind-the-scenes look at the, the you know, whole channel, everything, Connors Comics, the whole company, all that kind of stuff. So all, all that is linked down in the description below. And again, make sure you subscribe. Keep an eye out for updating daily videos. And uh, until next time, peace.